Today, we're talking about the Harley Davidson Road Glide Limited and 10 things you need to know. Hello, everyone. I am Mike, and welcome to New Bike Mike, where I like to share information about new bikes that I find interesting. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this in the future, then please remember to hit the subscribe. After all, it is free. Many of you have been asking me to do a comparison video for some of the big touring bikes from different brands. I've decided to do that video, but I'm going to do individual videos on each model first. I already did a video on the 2022 Gullwing, which will definitely be in the comparison video. And recently, I covered the new Indian Pursuit, which is their new top-of-the-line touring option from Indian Motorcycles, which is owned by Polaris. I decided to use the Harley-Davidson Road Glide Limited to represent Harley-Davidson in this comparison. The fourth bike will be a BMW, but I've not decide yet if it should be the K1600 or the R18 Transcontinental. I may have to do a video on both of these bikes to help me make up my mind. So let's get into it. 1. What's new? The only real changes for this premium touring model in 2022 from the last few years is colors and prices, which we will get into later. In 2019, Harley-Davidson made the Road Glide Ultra, and in 2020, they replaced the Road Glide Ultra with the Road Glide Limited. The most obvious differences I see in the Ultra and the Limited are the wheel sizes. Outside Outside that, it's hard to tell the difference from a 2019 Road Glide Ultra to a 2022 Road Glide Limited, but there are some subtle changes including a gloss finish inner fairing, heated grips, a new tank, and front and rear fender medallions. 2. Past updates. I would have to say in my opinion the last significant update to the Touring model was for the 2017 model year, when Harley introduced the Milwaukee 8 engine to the Touring line. It has a 4 valve per cylinder head M8 engine and offers 50% more intake and exhaust flow than the previous twin cam engine used in the prior models. But the engine, while being the big news, was not the only change. The front end got the new dual bending valve suspension as well. The rear saw a new shock as well, offering 15 to 30 percent more preload adjustment than previous standard Touring shocks. 3. Engine. The Road Glide Limited is powered by the fuel-injected Milwaukee 8 114 cubic inch engine, and this is a twin-cooled engine. Yes, Twin cooled. This is the only Road Glide in the lineup that features water cooled heads. I should mention the rest of the engine is air cooled still. Essentially, Harley uses water cooling in the heads near the exhaust ports, which is where heat is more likely to build up. Twin cooling is something that Harley started doing on some of the select touring models back in 2013, with the introduction of the 2014 models. With 10 and a half to 1 compression, this 45 degree V twin puts out 93 horsepower and 122 foot pounds of torque. While we are talking about the engine, I want to mention that Harley offers various levels of upgrade kits called stages to increase engine performance. Indian has started doing this as well, offering a stage 2 kit now. My point is simply that if you want more power, it's easily attainable on the Harley Davidson platform. 4. Drivetrain the Road Glide Limited has a six-speed transmission with a belt final drive that delivers power smoothly to the ground with low maintenance. Would you be surprised to know that the clutch is mechanically actuated and is an assist and slip clutch? 5. Chassis and Suspension The Touring frame is essentially the same frame used in 2009 with a few changes in 2014 and 2017. We get a mild steel tubular frame that features a bolt-on rear frame with forged fender supports. The swing arm is steel as well. As I touched on earlier, in 2017, the Touring Bikes got all new front and rear suspension for enhanced comfort and controllability. Those new in 2017 rear shocks offered 15-30% to 30 more preload in the standard shocks via a knob to hydraulically adjust the preload. The front suspension upgrade in 2017 introduced Showa SDBV technology. The front suspension is a 49mm dual bending valve and in the rear we get a standard height rear suspension shock. Travel in the front is 4.6 inches while the rear offers offers 3 inches of travel. While the suspension was improved in 2017, this is still a popular component to upgrade by many consumers. 6. Brakes When you're talking about these big touring bikes, brakes are really important and this luxurious Harley-Davidson touring model might surprise you. Most people don't realize that it has Reflex Brembo electronically linked anti-braking system as a standard option, which is also standard on all touring models from 2020 and later. This is a feature I constantly use on my Harley touring model. You see, linked braking is activated when the motorcycle is above 20 to 25 miles an hour. Below 20 miles an hour, the brakes act independently of each other. But once linked braking is activated, you can grab the front, the rear, or both, and the 
the reflex system will apply the braking to both brakes at a proportion that it determines is needed to optimize braking performance and allow the rider to maintain control during braking events that might happen in less than desirable conditions. My friends, this means when you're cruising down the interstate and you suddenly need to brake because some idiot cuts off in front of you, you don't have to worry about getting your feet back from the highway pegs before cramming on the brake pedal. You can simply apply the front brake and the reflex system will make sure the rear brake is applied as well. In the front, we get dual 32 millimeter four piston calipers on 300 millimeter floating rotors and in the rear, we get not a single or even double piston caliper, but a four piston caliper on a fixed 300 millimeter disc. Seven wheels. Now this seems a little odd to me, but the Road Glide Limited went to 18 inch wheels in the front and rear. The Road Glide Ultra that preceded the Limited had a 17 front and a 16 rear. On the new 18 inch Slicer 2 cast aluminum wheels, we will find Dunlop Harley Davidson branded black wall tires. Eight tech. The shark nose comes with dual LED Daymaker headlights and the motorcycle also has LED turn signals. Sadly, the tail, stop, and front turn signals are not LED. This seems like an odd combination of LED and incandescent bulbs. Gauges and display features include odometer, trip A, trip B, range to empty, and gear indicators. Equipped with the Boombox GTS Infotainment Center, you get a full color TFT screen and four speaker system with five and a quarter inch standard speakers. One of my favorite features when I'm riding twisty roads that I'm not familiar with is the GPS. I turn on the GPS map and it allows me to gauge how sharp the curves ahead are before I get to them. This is by no means a way to determine how fast you should enter a turn, but it can help you identify a curve that may tighten after you get into it versus a long sweeping curve. Standard, we get heated grips, cruise control, self-canceling turn signals, a security system, Bluetooth capabilities, a rider to passenger intercom system, the aforementioned ABS and electronically linked braking. Besides these standard features, Harley-Davidson offers the reflexive defensive rider system, which includes two rider modes and a set of riding safety aids like hill hold control, tire pressure monitoring system, cornering enhanced anti-lock brake system, cornering enhanced electronic linked braking, corner enhanced traction control system, and cornering drag torque slip control system. These are all components of the RDS system and that does add $1,025 to the price tag, but you do get some valuable tech for that price. Nine dimensions. Let's hit on some of the important dimensions which are the weight and the seat. The seat is 28.9 inches unladen and ready to ride weight is 932 pounds. So she's not a little bike and probably one of the heaviest in the class. Everyone thinks being that heavy is really a bad thing, but it also means this bike doesn't get pushed around by the wind from semis on the highways or interstates as easily, but it does make the bike more difficult to manage at slower speed. It's also worth mentioning that you get a six gallon tank and at 43 miles per gallon estimated, you should be able to easily get 200 miles between fuel stops without a worry. 10. Prices and colors. This pricing is MSRP without dealer fees, destination, or surcharges. Vivid Black with chrome finish is going to cost you $28,729. Mineral Green Metallic with chrome finishes is $29,424. And the two-tone Gauntlet Gray Vivid Black with chrome finish runs $29,879. Now, if you prefer black finishes, you can get the Vivid Black version for $30,724. The Gunship Gray with black finish is $31,419 and the two-tone reef blue and vivid black is $31,874. Don't forget if you want the RDRS option again that's $1,025 on top of these prices. Leave me a comment and let me know which of these colors and finish options you like the best. For me it has to be the reef blue and vivid black. I've seen the reef blue in person and it just absolutely looks fabulous. Don't forget to like the video, it really helps the channel grow, and subscribe if you want to see more videos from New Bike Mike. Thanks guys, and see you in the next one.